Next up from New York, Mr. Boris Karzak, who says he worked undercover for the CIA in the 1970s and now finds himself in a great deal of trouble. He claims to have spied on the Russians, even to have infiltrated the dreaded KGB for the United States. He also charges the CIA brushed him aside when trouble set in, and he says he cannot even obtain U.S. citizenship. Uh, Mr. Korzak, how did you first become involved with the CIA? Did they contact you, you, them, and why did you want to get involved with them? Uh, my involvement with the CIA was an old continuation of, I mean, continuation of an old struggle that I started in um, 1956 in Budapest. Uh, I joined revolutionaries uh, during uprising in Budapest. I was actually sent on an exchange program from Poland as one of the brilliant students to study in the University of, <coughs> excuse me, of uh, Budapest. And the first thing I saw was barricades. So our, well, my Hungarian enemy was an enemy of Poland, was an enemy of Lithuania, was an enemy of Russians, a Russian people. They were Soviets. For my fight during uh, Hungarian uprising, I was put to jail. I was sentenced to 15 years of camp. I spent three years in a concentration camp and after three years they released me um, just to die as my weight was about 80 pounds, which you will agree is not very much. When I reached West, which was in 1964, and to be more precise it was Denmark, I decided that that's the place where I can start really fighting. My first contact with American authorities proved not to be very successful. I was one of those people whom CIA call walk-in people. There are many people, probably some of them with good reasons, some of them because uh, they had a bad dream. Excuse me, you were called what? Work? Walk-in. 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 Walk in. Walk in, yes. Those are the people who approach usually American embassies and they claim that they can do the job. And they offer their services. Exactly. <clears throat> so my first approach was somehow not very successful. A gentleman in the American embassy, he smiled politely, he took my visit card and he dumped it in the first waste basket. He never contacted me. So next time, a couple of years later, I decided that I will provoke a situation where CIA or American government or whoever would be interested would get really interest in me and my possibilities. Uh, first thing I have done was to establish some good contacts with Soviets. They were not really KGB at that time. Those were the um, representatives of Mashpriborin Turk, which is a company selling machines. In the interests of, uh, of time here, could I assume that the contacts that you developed with the Russians uh, then made you more valuable to the CIA in terms of possible that service and ultimately you consumed a, a, a deal with them or an arrangement with them where, whereby you would do some work. That is correct. All right, now having set that scene, let me do the commercial here and then I sure. want to find out how you got in with the KGB. We'll be right back after this for the NBC television stations. Uh, Boris does not want to get into, I'm, I understand, what you did for this government, the types of information you exchanged, etc., 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 in terms of its uh, 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 being very specific. But suffice to say that there came a time when you also made an arrangement with the KGB, told this to the CIA, and operated as a double agent for a period of time. That is correct. There was also a moment in time where the KGB found out about your duplicity, and a man came to visit you at your house. Could you tell me what happened on that occasion? He had some great news for you, as I understand. Yes, it was uh, Christmas Eve 1979. Uh, actually, one of the evenings when everybody is so free of problems. And there was a knock on the door, and my ex-friend, that's hard to say, um, a professional assassin of the KGB, a drunkard, psychopath, who liked me. He really, he really liked <laughs> <Okay>. me. <laughs> and he came um, all in tears almost. He said, Boris, I have to tell you, we know what you are doing. And here he told me what they know, and they actually knew everything. He said, and I'm the guy who will come after your head. I have to kill you, and I will kill you. But you know, I like you. I will kill you very fast. So, um, well, <laughs> Uh, did you ask me if he was taking Christmas off or? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, he gave me he gave me Christmas evening off. The harassment started a few days later, 
Um, my car was being shot at. Uh, my wife was being pushed off the road with her car. She spent a couple of weeks in a hospital. Children threatened? My, uh, there was attempt to kidnap my that time seven years old son. He is now with me in the United States. Uh, he's doing fine. And um, then, of course, the first thing I did was to approach my case officer. And he checked with the uh, chief of station. And the answer was, why don't you s sit low? D -d -d just wait what will happen. <laughs> Thank you. So I did for a while. I tried even to be very patient, though it is sometimes very uncomfortable, you know, when uh, three cars chase you on a dark road. Then I decided that's not exactly the way it should be done. So I approached against CIA and I said, look, fellas, I want to go to Washington. I want to find out how good are your promises. Which promises? They came an answer, and well, then I start quoting promises. First was umbrella, a security umbrella for me and my family. Then there was United States citizenship. Then there was resettlement. Then there was, of course, costs of resettlement. And so on and so on. There was a free hospitalization. Actually, there was also a free education for my children in private schools. Well, you see, they pro I really never been into the United States before, so I was, I was kind of naive. I believe that. Um, well, the, the pra in practice, you know, I came to, uh, to Washington, D.C. The CIA asked, after I mean I pressed CIA, they asked American Embassy to issue me a visa. Uh, for some nasty reasons, which I cannot understand, they under visa, they have written with a hand that Mr. Korczak applied for immigration to the United States, which they were aware it will stop me in New York in immigration. They will never let me in. Because according to United States law, everybody who applies for immigration is not permitted to enter the United States as a tourist. After four hours explanation in New York, the good man there, he let me in. Anyway, I came to Washington, D.C., I was met by my case officer. And he picked me up in his car, he drove me to his home, and he tried to tell me what kind of an idiot I am, trying to push my luck as it was tried before, and nobody ever won. So why don't I just take my camera and make some snapshots and go back where I belong? Because these guys are going to kill you is why you don't want to go back there. Exactly. What is your status in the United States now? Can, can you be sent back? Can you be deported? Well. Since last Friday, it means a couple of days ago, I got good news. It was almost like Christmas present that Labor Department um, issued me a permit to work in the United States. And today, uh, my papers for uh, residence are being processed or were being processed, um, which is the first step to achieve at least a part of promises that CIA gave me. I will not. I want to repeat it, I will not accept only this. I want United States citizenship, not because it is so comfortable, but because I represent, I'm not really elected by those good guys who work for this country. I represent, I don't know how many thousands of people who fight for this country, who believe in this country, who trust. And I don't want any more ex-agents to be disappointed, hurt, spat at, and insulted. I was insulted in the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence when a man who paid a visit to CIA to check my credibilities, he came with a ready answer. I quote, Dear Boris, we, means CIA, we buy guys like you for 100 bucks a head. You can hardly expect that we will import all our agents to the United States. We would be overcrowded. The same morning when I drove to Senate, Jimmy Carter, Welcome with open heart and open arms. Cubans, I have nothing against Cubans. But we did something, we agents, we were fighting for you. We proved to be Americans even without seeing this country. And actually that's a, that's a home I have chosen for, uh, you know, for me and my family. Congratulations on the victory so far and good luck thank in the fight in the much. future. And thank you for being with us tonight, Mr. Boris Korshak. Thank you.